Hi guys, wanted to do a quick video for you, let you know what we're up to, what we've been doing for the past couple days. Josh and I, our new employee, and myself have been doing a lot of work in here, so we'll give you a little, a little uh, preview of what we've been up to. So this is going to be the welding area over in here. We're going to build a small 10 foot wall coming out from the wall there out to about here, uh, no, about here and we'll affix it to the wall there to give it some rigidity, but it'll be maybe an eight foot tall wall so that you have enough clearance to get in, do anything you need to with the electronics, or not electronics, sorry, with the electric, and the air. Um, then this whole area will be sort of partitioned off from the rest of the shop so that none of the sparks or anything dirty is going over towards the electric panels or the air. Um, we'll probably have those movable welding panels. They're like the orange or kind of a reddish clear material that you can sort of see through, but it keeps the, uh, the welding arc from affecting other people if they accidentally look at it. They'll be on casters so that you can move them around. Um, maybe three of them, like boom, boom, boom. And then coming off of this one vertical over here, we're gonna have another wall coming out, probably another 10, 10 foot wall coming out here. So that's going to all be sheeted with metal on the inside to protect it from the welding sparks and anything going on there that's hot, essentially fire hazards, you know, to just minimize those. Um, these are not in their final positions. We just kind of put the tables here to give us a little idea. This Harmony Turbine's front desk, you may recognize it. It's beautiful, I know, but we're getting rid of it. So this is being retired and the only reason we have it here right now is just because I don't have enough extension cords. I'll bring another extension cord tomorrow. And then this area is going to relocate to the back, which I'll get to in a moment. But on the other side of this wall, we have a heavy duty steel table here. This one's gonna be for you know, just fabricating or working on some things. We'll probably mount a a vise in there. Well, I'm not sure. There might be might be a vise mounted in here. We've got our big arbor press that'll be on here. We've got our lathe and then a setup table for the lathe. We've got the bandsaw. That one can be pulled out so we can put large pieces in it. And then we'll have the horizontal mill over here. That's not set up yet. It's just sitting here on uh, on a pallet. So it'll be spun 90 degrees. And then this table will, or this workbench will come out a little bit here. We just have it kind of smushed together at the moment to conserve space. Uh, back here, drill press and grinding. Things may morph a little bit. We're not 100% set on this being our setup, but we like it. So this is giving you an idea of what this side of the shop is gonna be. Back here, around this area where I'm standing, Kind of going to be from, from here back behind me is all going to be like office and some supplies. We might have some um, just shelving, heavy duty shelving to put some stock and things like that on. And then we're going to have our whiteboards. We've got six of these. They're beautiful, guys. I didn't realize this when we won the auction. I was bidding on them last week and I thought they came out of a school. These little Green. I thought they were stickers that the kids were putting all over them, and I thought, man, that's going to be a mess. Uh-uh. You know what these are? It is the brand new film on these perfectly brand new, like if we peeled that off, these are brand new, never used. So we've got five brand new, never used whiteboards. We've got one whiteboard that was used, but um, it's in perfect condition once we clean it off and get all the, the old markings off of it. So we're going to have a whiteboard here, a whiteboard over there on that wall. And then probably two whiteboards here. And then the last two whiteboards will go up somewhere, maybe one on the uh, welding station or near there, and maybe one on the other side up front. We've done our sheet metal on our bathroom. So the bathroom has sheet metal, and we're working out how we're going to do the plumbing because we have to come off of the drain line here and catch our kitchenette. So we don't yet have that crap. That's what I forgot at Home Depot today. <laughs> we'll get that then, that's no problem. <laughs> no problem. So we're gonna hook up the kitchenette. Um, now that we have access to our wall because the racking's down. Oh yeah, 
the racking's down. Yeah, the racking's down. The racking's down. I didn't even say I'm anything. sure they noticed that if yeah. they've been watching. Well, okay. <laughs> the racking is down, and you can't, you know, you can't believe how good that feels because it's been two and a half months that I've, yeah. you know, been waiting for us to be able to get the racking down. The landlord and uh, Risser Properties was able to get the racking down for us, so now we have all that clear, and obviously we're putting things up against the wall. It's possible they're going to reinforce a little bit more, so you know we don't want things permanently hooked up yet. I need to check with them to make sure that they're signing off and saying done before we... Who knows? We may end up doing sheet metal on the whole wall. I'm not sure yet. We're, we'll, things are in flux right now, and you have to understand that. So our actual station, the workstation for the computer, remember I was saying that is going away. This is going to be... My work desk, Josh was feeling lonely being so far away from me, so he insisted on having his right up against mine. <laughs> Space saving right now. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have the desks back here in the, you know, in the beginning. We'll work it out. But we're going to bring power. We'll bring the 110 power, um, low voltage, single phase, down that wall across the back so that we can power the kitchenette, you know, for microwave and then power the computers and stuff over here. I'll probably leave the Wi-Fi where it's at in the middle just to help give coverage to the whole shop so that we don't have a dead spot in the front. Uh, yeah, the bathroom, I, I don't know if we want to show our beautiful bathroom here, but we just got supplies. Josh is going to be working on this when he has some time and I've got, you know, admin duties or things that I'm doing. So we're going to mud and paint the bathroom in here. We have a mirror that's going to go up, so we'll have a workable bathroom. That's and right there. A door that shuts now and you can lock it. If we get any female employees, that'll be probably appreciated that we can lock the bathroom. And uh, yeah, you guys have already seen the CNC stuff, but we'll take a walk down here because now CNC machine number one is going to have its own workstation here. CNC machine two will have its workstation. And then we've got the disconnect switches right back through in between them. We did run the wires, but I haven't hooked anything up yet. So these will be set up so that you can power and disconnect. And then coming up the wall, maybe 10 feet, we'll swag over to a flagpole coming off of machine number one and machine number two so that they'll each have um, power coming to them, but no wires on the floor or anything like that. And then if we walk over here, we've got vertical one and two, and we just got the disconnect switches today. So there's another 600 volt. 30 amp disconnect switch, so we've got two of them. They'll be running here, and we're gonna see if we can get these wired up for the 480, because I'm trying to keep as much of the 208 panel free as I can. We don't have a ton of amperage on our 208 panel. Um, about 150 amps available. Unfortunately, with these two old CNC machines, the way they were pre-set up from the factory, I have to run them off of the 208 panel. So each of those takes 40 amps. So right away, out of the 150, boom, we're down 80 amps. So that leaves about 70 to do other things with. But if you know anything about electric, all of your single phase, all of your, um, your 220 and your single phase, well, they're both single phase, they will come off of the 208 panel. So we've got to be careful not to get too much going on the 208 panel. So I'm going to try and rewire those to run off a of 480. The welders run off of 480 so awesome there we got our 350 keys both of those are running off of 480 and then last but not least we've got um vidmar tool cabinet here and this <laughs> silly desk i want to get more of these guys so we're going to be in the market watching auctions for i don't know probably another six cabinets similar to this or you know maybe ones that are on carts or rollers um we can put them back behind workstations, move them around as needed, but we'll fill them in. As you can see, it's really starting to open up in here now, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Today was the first day that we finally got to feel what it's going to be like to do work in here. 
to get the work going to start doing all of the actual prototyping and development that we need to get back to. So, we are, what, it's the 3rd of March today and we are way ahead of schedule as far as setting up the shop and getting the equipment in where it needs to go. And at this point, as soon as we have sign off from the Risser properties that we can begin running our electric and power on that wall that they've done everything they want to do to secure that wall, then we're going to run our power, we're going to run our air on that wall to the machines. Welders are going to be powered, um, single phase is going to be run to the back to the office area, air is going to be run down that wall, and then we're going to rent a lift, go up, over, down, and then air is going to be run on that wall as well. So we're going to have two main airline trunks going down one wall and then the other wall so that all the machines have air. I'm trying to think what else to talk about here. Our, our parking area, believe it or not, for the forklift, I believe we're going to keep it up here. We'll probably have it flipped around the other way so it's not way out in the middle. But this is sort of, we're calling it like the no-fly zone. This area in here, we want to keep it open so that if we do have a delivery come in and it's bad weather or whatever, we can pull in as much as possible use the forklift to offload the materials. So to do that, to allow for that to happen, it means we have to keep this area as open as possible at all times. But whenever you're offloading a vehicle, you're gonna be using the forklift to do it. So what better place to store the forklift than the very place you're gonna be using to pull into and offload from. So the forklift will likely be 180 degrees around against that wall, parked in here at some point in the near future when we get things cleaned up a little bit more. Sorry, we didn't get a chance to clean up the trash, but that's okay. That's, that's from our cardboard run we just did 10 minutes ago, so. Yeah, that was, we were, it was a residential cardboard run. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Not a small business cardboard run. So that's the, uh, we'll have the sandblaster there too, because right. it makes such a mess, it figured, of you. keep it close to the door. Sorry for the hand there, folks. There you go, Josh. So, uh, try and keep everything in a good flow. Um, most of this stuff over here, we're gonna be getting rid of. We're just, all the wires and whatnot. Um, we're gonna probably end up having a, a good burn party sometime to have a bonfire maybe at his house or something, I don't know. I've um, got a nice place to burn the pellets at my get house. Get rid of all that stuff. Yeah. But um, it's a uh, really good day with everything. We got a lot done, uh, clean up tools. Um, other than that, sitting on top of the uh, welding table, that's yeah. going to get taken back down once his... You mean you don't moves. want to climb up on the table to use that vertical positioner? I mean, I don't know how OSHA's going to feel about it, but um, yeah. I'm sure it's going to... No, <laughs> that that thing's going to actually go down where the white uh, temporary yeah. Harmony Turbine front desk is at. So that that welding vertical welding positioner is going to go right here once we move this out of there. So, But uh, yeah, we have... Uh, 99% of where we want everything. We might move a few things um, to different places um, other than stuff that's on top of the table. Um, but uh, this is this is the layout, guys. This is what it's going to look like. Yep. And uh, try to give every machine enough room for their workspaces so that we can get product in, um, enough room on each machine for skids, for uh, our stock product and you know the final assembly stuff that we can pick up with a lift, back up and set it to each station. Lean manufacturing. We are gonna do our best to follow lean manufacturing procedures yeah. or yeah. you know, standards, whatever you want to call it. Shout out to Pearson Work Holdings and New York CNC for introducing me to it. Josh already has experience. I've been doing it for years. I've had a lot of lean training for um, different companies. We every year they do lean training, so Yep. So that's yeah. what we're gonna do. And yeah, the middle aisle here, if I back up and get a shot, you can see there's plenty of room to get the forklift down so we can bring supplies down as I'm backing up and you can kind of take in the breadth and width of everything here. It's, uh, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice workable space and I'm really liking it. Yesterday I wasn't liking it so much. We were <laughs> it was, it was pretty I don't even know yesterday. if I wanna show that footage. Maybe yeah. we'll put a little 10 second blip of the footage in there it was yeah. horrible stuff was just everywhere but yeah today it's it's really coming along and if harmony turbines does really good after a year 
18 months, who knows, and we need more room, then what we're doing, you want to tell them? Sure. Do you, do you know enough about what the plan is? Expanding out over onto the side over here. Not just the side, the whole back. Oh, we can go out the back? No, well, no, level two. Oh, yeah, 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 gotcha, gotcha. So, oh, uh, right? So we're going to have a second level for the office space, um, break room, everything up top there. Yep. So that we have the rest of this floor space all the way out. Bathroom stand. Yep. No need to move that. Yeah, we'll probably put a um, second bathroom upstairs. So, yeah, it's going to be boys and girls. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. So then we'll have the staircase coming down here to uh, get up top. Um, and yeah. we'll have everything set up that way. That way we can utilize the space for uh, more storage. Yep. Um, whatever we can think of. Machines, <laughs> who knows? It'll be a fluid space. Yeah. But we'll come out about 20 whole feet, which yeah. brings us to right about where the whiteboard ends. So 20 feet and then all the way from that wall to over here, 20 feet is right about where the um, ladder is at. So this whole area here, 20 feet by, you know, whatever it is, 40 feet across, 800 square feet that we'll have 12 feet high in the air, we'll build our second layer. It's a little bit hard for everyone to visualize, but the, uh, there'd be a lot of room up there for offices and computers and meeting room, kitchen area, stuff like that. So that's if we grow really well and need that extra space. Um, the final thing would be, as Josh was starting to say, because I didn't do a good job of saying this, <laughs> thing, if we ever need even more space, Risser Properties has said that we can move out through into an area over there. And I'm not sure what that square footage would be. Um, maybe another thousand square feet if we can get that. We'll see. Um, obviously, we'll talk to them if the need ever arises that we see we're going to need that. We would remove our whiteboard, cut through, and then expand into that area. And we'll see how that, you know, we'll, I don't even want to speculate, but we've just <laughs> got another in the lease agreement. We already have that locked in that we can expand into there if need be. So, other than my hole in my shirt today, I know you were all, you couldn't, watch any of the other part of the film you were just staring at this right that literally happened the first 10 minutes we got to work today did it yeah pretty, pretty you were walking by the uh, right by the squeezing by the one machine yeah by the lathe i got yep. it on the back end of the turret lathe so that's it guys um it's coming together this will be a pretty big lengthy video but i think it had a lot of good information in it that everyone wanted josh you want to say anything else or I uh, apologize for the noise, but this is how it's going to be because we're sharing a space. Yeah, it's going to be noisy, it's going to so. be fun, it's going to be exciting, and that's what it's all about. So, we'll keep you updated as we grow and as we go forward. Stick with us. Uh, we have one more month, I almost forgot. We are closing down our WeFunder campaign at the end of March. So it's going to be April 1st, I think. I have to check what the paperwork is. We are closing down our WeFunder campaign at the end of March. You know, it's like April 1st, I think, is going to be the end. Done. So we've raised, uh, when I looked this morning, I think we're up at 162, 163,000. If you want to get in in this first round of funding, do it now because you've got about four weeks before that closes out. Um, one of the things that I didn't really know going into this, you can use retirement funds, 401k, um, uh, IRA, things like that to actually invest in startups now. So WeFunder has that option. You can click on their website, click the link and find how to get into our company, invest in it with your retirement funds if you would like to do that. So maybe that opens up an option or two for other, for people out there. Four weeks, you've got about four weeks until this first round of funding closes and we're done with it. We're gonna take a pause um, you know, for a couple months then, see where things go, and if we start taking on orders and pre-orders for units, we may not need to do another round of funding. So if you want to get in on investment for Harmony Turbines, do it now, guys. That's just what's going to happen. All right, I think that's everything. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for believing in what we're doing, and we will catch you on the flip side.